New York City is chaotic. It's loud at all times of the day, there's crazies at every corner that you go to, and it's non-stop packed action whether you like it or not. I know, right? It's beautiful. And in my work, I like to control that chaos with a high shutter speed, everything is in focus, and nothing blurry. But I know that there are some times when I like to show the kinetic energy of the photo by allowing some motion blur to come into play. But I seldom do that. I know there's a time and place for motion blur, especially if you want to show that kind of energy in the scene. But what if motion is the primary device and you let that blur paint the picture for you? What would happen then? Before I go further, I would love to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace provides some of the industry leading tools for making a portfolio for photographers like us who want to be taken seriously. I recently renovated my website to be more focused on my documentary work. Squarespace allows a lot of customizability from their award winning templates to something as simple as changing the background to black. I love how my website feels more mature, and if I have any questions or problems, I know I can contact the 24 7 customer service to get myself squared away. You can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash Chris Chu. Use my code Chris Chu at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So here's my first case for blurry photos as an art form and that is to do it so egregiously that it turns into a painting. So in my attempt for this argument, I'm going to manufacture enough motion in my camera to create enough abstraction from reality, so to speak. So I will be using my Canon R5 for this because there's no way I'm going to be wasting my film on these many, many attempts to create artistic blurry photos. And the fine balance that I'm looking for is right in the middle of it look like a shaky hand mistake to you're trying way too hard. I want you to be able to know what this photo is trying to show you within one second of looking at it. Not any faster than that, not any longer than that. I want your brain to kind of know what it is and for you to be surprised that your brain can pick out the human shape forms as distorted as it is. Because to me, if your brain can pick it out within milliseconds, then I didn't add enough blur for abstraction. And if it takes longer than a second, that means I just shook it way too much for the sake of shaking it. Okay, so nothing about my camera settings are complicated. I do use a slow shutter speed from half a second to maybe 1 20th. And because of all that light that's coming in, I close down my aperture all the way down to F22. Most of the times that's still not enough, but it's okay because my Canon RAW files can handle a lot of overexposure. But if you want to use an ND, go ahead. I personally don't care. And when I find myself at a standstill, I add my own little lateral movement and swings and twitches just to add that motion blur by myself. But because I don't do this very often, I leave my camera on full burst mode. So hopefully that increases my chances of getting at least one good photo. It's not something I regularly do. So hopefully these turn out. emotional roller coaster we're high so high i could put bowl bowl on a poster but when the bread get low like four loaves and a toaster oh the shoulders can't get cold as ten toes in nova scotia some days i hold a grudge some days i hold a ghoster some days i just ghost her. some days i'm supposed to the crib feel like a gunfight but them strollers that's the holster we can make amends over old memes and mimosas my mama know i ain't make my bed but i'ma lay in it whether it's sandpaper suede linen whether i'm alone a creole lady mama laid in it the same pajamas i was afraid in i boogie man slayed my blankets conceal my blade in it emotional seesaw with two fat motherfuckers with strong knees and free fall it's cloudy with a chance of meatballs i checked the weather i gave all my vices a call let's get together to talk about the highs and lows the ups and downs the friends that i had to hide to come around they told me that i knew you always come around come around come around come around come around to work out the highs and lows the ups and downs no need to hide the skies is coming down go and get high i promise you're coming down coming down coming down coming down coming down, coming down, coming down. Your eyes on the road and you feel your backs on the road. You gotta take the highs with the lows. The highs with the 
Gotta take the highs with the low. You're lost and you're running out of hope. Looking for the best way to cope. Just know we all been there before. Gotta take the highs with the low. I was feeling lifeless. I had to cut my vices. Now the feeling that I feel is priceless. In the spirit, want me to. So where I found a lot of fun and creative enjoyment was in the post processing when I was editing it with the colors and all that stuff. I do miss playing around with raw files from time to time, but the actual execution of just shaking my camera in street photography feels so stupid and it doesn't feel inspiring at all i'm just holding down a burst button and just like vibrating my camera just in varying degrees like oh this might be too much oh this might be too little and just trying to find that goldilock middle that part is no fun to me so the two types of scenes that i was looking for were based on the highlights and the midtones of the subject so for the first case i was looking for very vibrant front lit subjects because in the highlights those are the things that are going to be streaking in this long exposure wavy photo so if i get like a colorful color contrast subject that is lit by the sun then i'm going to see streaks of orange blue red yellow and that's going to be awesome the midtones and the shadows don't really play that much of a role in the streaking but they do add kind of that like undertone in what the painting is going to look like at the end the second case that i was going to look for is have the highlights be a secondary device so maybe a backlit subject where the edge of their frame is kind of lit by the sun and while i'm waving my camera around you'll only see the edge of their frame being waved and translated across the frame but the midtones are going to be the main subject but since the midtones don't really play that much of a role in this long exposure your brain is going to take a little bit longer to decipher what this actually is Clearly, I'm speaking from a hypothetical, personal, subjective standpoint, and I don't really know what I'm talking about, but that's the thing that I was aiming for. Huh, hope that made sense. All right, so I'm just gonna walk you through a little bit of my post-processing for some of these photos. For this one, I have a surprisingly not overexposed photo, so I'm just going to start with some cropping. I've been liking a 16 by nine crop lately. And then obviously I do a little bit of a tilt adjustment just to make sure that my composition and frame is good with straight lines and getting enough of the subject in frame. And because this is such an abstract photo, I felt like I could go pretty crazy with the edit, the color, the contrast, and let my creative freedom fly. So I started off with a base preset that I've built over the years, and I start to add a lot of saturation vibrance my plan a is to always increase the highlights and decrease the shadow so i can see the main characters aka the colorful highlights that i want to emphasize so now i can easily take inventory of the warm and cool highlights in the frame and i'll modify them as i please with the hsl tab or the general vibrance and saturation with the clarity slider that's where it gets a little bit interesting for this with the clarity slider i like to go in the negative 30s or 40s because of how much smoother the photos will look and there are other photos that i did experiment with a higher clarity but it ended up not being in my favor so i just bumped it down to the negative 30s to 50s and then with my tone curve i like to soften up the highlights like i usually do with all of my digital photos by bringing down that white point and bringing down those highlights so the inspiration behind the look that i was subconsciously kind of going for is kind of from edward hopper's color palette but more so from the mid-century wall art of my uncle and auntie's place that i used to go to when i was a kid i wish i could show you photos of the exact things that i'm talking about but they're probably long gone by now that was around 20 years ago and i'm not really into paintings to begin with which is pretty interesting considering what this exercise was and this was pretty fun to do Actually, no, I'm lying. I just said it sucked because it did suck. But the post-processing was really fun. But anyway, circling back to the inspiration, most of the wall art was depicted in cities, brick buildings, high rises, and these old timey 1940s, 1960s characters that were almost abstracted beyond recognition where you could see their body type, but you can never see their faces. It's also interesting to note that from my personal experience of being in other people's homes, that the abstract photos of people are the ones that make it to the wall or on the shelf rather than photos that are perfectly in focus and sharp it's interesting that way my hypothesis on that is that maybe if you have photos of people that are clearly in focus and not blurry that is probably family photos and to have photos of strangers or some kind of story might be a little bit jarring or different or maybe inappropriate but that's not to say that people don't want perfectly in focus and sharp photos of people most of the times they probably exist in the form of coffee table books or just thick photo books on the shelf or on the table. It's interesting how it is that way, but that's just an observation. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and comment down below about your thoughts on this topic, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.